computer. Can we get Dread? Can you tell me some things? Let me check your sound. Check, check. Nice. Boy from uh, Canada. Nice. John, how about you? Hello? Wonderful. How's that? Okay. Larry? Hello, hello. Testing. Okay, getting pretty good baseline. George? Yeah, here. It's me. It's good to see all of you. Okay, you're pretty good. Uh, Scott? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah. And then yes. Sean? Hi. Yes. Okay, cool. Everyone, this is uh, just just keep uh, everyone up to date. It's a radio <laughs> show that we're doing, despite the fact that we're doing it online. So we can't curse anything worse than Dan, you can't say. Um, and no calls to action. So you could be like, hey, um, I want I like protesting and in theory, but you can't be like, let's meet up at 6 p.m. at the Capitol building and burn it down. Like, you can't say that. Yeah, let's not join the Canadian convoy or anything right. like that. Uh, today, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and possibly eight. Is that John Richards' audio? Okay, so seven people on the show. It's two 20-minute breaks, right? So you got to remember that every single time you're talking, there's six other people that aren't talking. So if we can try to keep our responses a little short and to the point. And if you get asked a question, please answer that question. Don't go off. On, well, let me start with the stories. Like, no, don't forget please to answer raise something. your hand. If you yes. want to talk, if you raise your hand, when you talk, I'll, I will get to you. I guarantee. And if you open up your chat window, we can talk without talking. Um, if possible, it helps if you can mute your microphone until you're ready to talk. That way, any like incident sneezing or slurping or crunching or, or static doesn't get caught up in the audio of the show. And uh, we'll get ready to start. We'll do a 20. We'll go for like about 20 minutes. We do a half hour, a break in a half hour. And then we come right back into it if everyone's good. And then we should be done by about 11 o'clock Eastern Central Time, Central Time. That's about one hour from now. All right, Larry, you're good recording now how's my audio my Larry? Am I all right oh it's good yeah okay great cool uh i'm recording the show five four oh dread do you need a six count for twitch go ahead okay six five four three two hello and welcome to the digital free thought radio hour on wozo radio 103.9 lpfm right here in knoxville tennessee we're recording this on Sunday morning, uh, January 30th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Good news. I've joined a new religion. It's called Super Deluxe Atheism. I'm very happy about it. Oh, I think I'm there, too. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. We got the new Good DLC and everything. <laughs> yeah. Can I, have, can I have Super Duper Deluxe? What? I'm already outdated? <laughs> no. Yeah, absolutely. And with us on the lines uh, from across the sea, we have the John Richards uh, over in England. Hello, hello. Hello. We have Dread Pirate Higgs from Canada Way, George Arr. Brown from East Tennessee. Hello, hello. And uh, hello. The, duo, the famous duo, the action duo of Sean and Scott. <laughs> What's Say, up? Mm -hmm. The Big Easy. Yep. This is Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. It's a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought humanism and the sciences and conversely we'll also talk about religion religious faiths god holy books and superstition and if you think you're the only non-believer in town well you're just not we're a small town well kind of small in uh tennessee in the bible belt and we have a group of over a thousand of us and we'll tell you more about that group after the mid-show break but you are not alone also we have just joining us with us uh eric green say hello hello Wombat, what's our topic for today? Today, we're going to be talking, does raising your child in a religious environment mean or, con or constitute uh, child abuse? Is that technically child abuse to raise your kid in a religious environment? But you guys, we are one square away from a Brady Butt situation. So let's just jump straight <laughs> into the meat and potatoes. I'd say quick invocation from Dredd, and then we'll start talking about the topic. Dredd, would you mind leading us in our weekly invocation? Newly Lord, who art in a calendar, al dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs and the sauces and the grog whenever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
and you got to remember he's the meatball, the sausage, and the carbs. So like you can and make it any way you want, and the grog. And grog. He's all there. It's all it's all possible. Dread balanced straight, meal. Straight up, going to ask you the question first: Does raising your kid in a religious environment constitute as child abuse? I absolutely uh, believe it does. Yes. Whoa! Talk to me. Talk to me. Well, I mean, I was raised. Uh, a Roman Catholic, uh, you know, was indoctrinated at a very uh, early age and um, was taught all kinds of nonsense, which uh, took uh, many years to get to get over, um, including all these horrible misconceptions about how the world works, how people work and uh, and uh, how I should relate uh, to other people in the world. So I'll yeah, throw this yeah. I'll throw this bone out at you then. How about this? You know, in the you could have been an atheist that never really questioned anything and just was lucky to be in a situation where you weren't indoctrinated. Isn't the fact that you were religious and learned to work your way out of it in its own right a benefit? No. It's, oh. it's like saying that what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Hmm. No. It makes you weaker, right? Um, reason takes practice. And if I had had the opportunity to start at an earlier age, I would be hmm. better at it now than I am. Reason takes practice. I love it. Reason takes practice. Yeah. John it's Richards. not a natural state for the human mind. I love it. I love it. I love reason takes practice. That's a great line. Cause like, if you don't have a chance to practice it, that, that could be yeah, a problem. I'll get a t-shirt with that on and uh, they'll be for sale. Very cool. John, what's <laughs> up? Well, as luck would have it last night, yesterday afternoon to you, I had an interview on, in my free thought hour show with a guy called Andrian Time Swift, who to this day, and I think he must be about 28 now, is still suffering illness as a result of being raised in Seventh-day Adventism and having had to escape from it. Right. It's left him with psychosomatic condition. Mm. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a form of PTSD, right? Yes. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. So, John, I'll throw the question out at you. Would you then, based on that interview or anything else, consider religious upbringing child abuse, intentional yes, or otherwise? I would. Yes. Yes. Because it's, it's a deception. So you're giving your child a disadvantage at the beginning of life when you should be giving them help. OK, well, let me poke at this a little bit. When you're when you're an adult, sometimes you have the tooth fairy and it's all in good fun. And sometimes you have Santa Claus and that's all in good fun. And sometimes mommy and daddy, when they love each other, there's a stork that comes and drops babies down the chimney. And that works pretty well. Like it's it's in the interest of just, you know, keeping harsh comp concepts away from a child. Like, why does a child have to think about death or like unfairness of the universe? Like, isn't this ultimately a good thing? How many homes have a chimney now? <laughs> I don't know. In England, it might be every home. I have no idea. I don't know. Flats. Flats on that. My bad. Flats don't. Flats. I think every home in England has a chimney sweep, if the, even if they don't have a chimney. We're getting very, very close to like stereotypes of English culture from Americans' points of views. That's going to make John Richards go on a four minute tirade. Uh, and, the, and the sweeps have a, an appalling Cockney accent. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Uh, but yeah, I mean, what's the harm if you if we accept things like Santa Claus or tooth fairies or storks or other stuff? Why can't we allow that? Eric, did you want to take that? Go for it. Oh, you're on mute, my bud. There we go. No, still. Nope. On. Still can't hear okay. you. No, there we are. There, there you go. Are. There you there are. You there, are. You there, are. You there you are. Nice. All right. I should have audio check. I came in late, guys. Apologies. Totally fine. Um, no, I, I think it'd probably be fair to make the distinction, though, that what you're talking about, fairy, uh, tooth fairy, Santa Claus, all of that. It's great. Great analogy for tough concepts. But we also let the cat out of the bag eventually. Right. You get to middle school or whatever and and you realize, oh, OK, it was all fake. But if we did the same thing with religion, mm. maybe that might I, I don't know. I might be on board with that. It might be. Yeah, OK. Death is tough. Uh, things like that. Let's let's pretend this all happened and then but at least let the cat out of the bag at some point and be like okay we were just messing with you so when would be a good time to let the cat out of the bag eric you're on an interesting little uh tangent here i like it when would be a good time to let a kid know yeah by the way this whole bible thing that's just fairy tales I, it, it we don't know what's going to happen i think that's probably the best way of going forward what's up when's the right I, time to pull that string i i think like dread saying earlier they're better i mean let's get them practice practicing reason i 
found out about Santa really early, found out there was no Santa really early. And I was a, a fan of that because I, I felt like it was lying to them. It, it didn't feel right. So hmm. um, we love Santa. We love Christmas. We do all that. But but yeah, I think sooner the better, really. As soon as they, you think they can handle it. Okay. On the board, Eric hates Christmas. War on Christmas continues for atheists. Larry, any other comments? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. <clears throat> um, Richard Dawkins is famous for saying that it trained it trains us to be satisfied with with ignorance or not knowing things uh, but it's also logical and scientific ignorance specifically that it that it trains kids to do without and not miss uh, and some religions are worse than others like mm. fundamentalist protestantism uh, mm. islam uh, seventh day adventist uh, and some are some people are more subject to more harm than others women for example yep. uh for example um islamic female circumcision circumcision is, is a terrible male practice. circumcision i'm sorry M male I'm too okay. as well yeah. but it's particularly bad with female oh yeah definitely definitely yeah in in the concept for females it literally takes uh the pleasure out of you know relationships mm -hmm. for men so they're trying their best to take it out skin. yeah it's sort of mm -hmm. like I, I wish i had a choice in there but i was a baby and they just take it off but yeah larry i'm gonna throw something out at you uh right. you're next up on my list you know you had a wonderful i don't know when exactly you turned into an atheist right i'm using the terms facetiously by the way so i have my christian hat on you can't see it but uh -huh. when you turned into an atheist it was yeah. around 9-11. So what were you like around oh, 30? No. You were That's... like 20? It was like, how old are you? About like 25? <laughs> 9-11, <laughs> I was 9-11, I was 51. Yeah. And I'd been an atheist for 30 years. Okay. I, I, was, okay. I turned okay. atheist in college. Got it. Got it. Got it. So you had a good 20 years of your formative life. You know, you, you, you didn't kill anybody as far as we know, uh, you, <laughs> you didn't rob any banks, you know, morale, your morality, you know, Christianity puts you on the right track and you, and you turned into an atheist after the fact, like, I don't see a problem there. You had your morality instilled to you when you were young, it worked for you. And then you became an adult. Like I could see that working well for most kids, by the way, you're on mute. Go for it. As I say repeatedly uh, on these podcasts, uh, what Christians teach is not morality or the Bible does not teach morality. It teaches obedience. Mm, uh, right. being able to define and decide what is what is the ethical and moral action at a particular time is morality following somebody's dictates is not morality i had a similar that's very true when i was in college the reason why i stopped being a christian was i took a class on morality and realized all the bible quotes i had were insufficient <laughs> as using it as a system it was sort of like knowing all the answers to a back of a math book versus knowing how to do math, right? right. And as soon as I got exactly. a question I never saw before, I didn't have mm -hmm. the answer that I could pull out. I had to actually learn how to do math. And then when I went back to the Bible, I'm like, this is not morality. This is like some really terrible behavior of an all-powerful being onto his, you know, sh sh his creations. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. Sean and Scott, you want to tag team this? Um, yeah, is... I would like to say something. Okay, yeah, go for it. Go for it, Sean. And, you know, and... and... And what's cool is, is like, I've been an atheist since I don't remember ever believing in God. Now, were um, you in the truth? Uh, am I allowed to pull that no. up right now? Okay. Okay. No, he wasn't a Jehovah witness. That was No, no, not at all. Um, I was, you know, initially, you know, we grew up as Southern Baptists. I remember, you know, my grandmother taking me to church, you know, relentlessly. And it was, <laughs> I always considered that just torture. You know, because I didn't understand what was being said. I was too young, first of all, you know, and, you know, that the benches were hard, and, yes. you know, it was uncomfortable and all of these things. But what really, I think what really triggered me uh, was had to do with Santa Claus, because like everybody else, you know, we were we were taught, OK, God is all knowing and all seeing. He knows what everybody's doing at any time. And but so does Santa Claus, because he's checking his list, he's watching you, and he's checking his list and checking it twice, and all of these things, and, and I remember one Christmas morning, how, you know, kids can't wait to go downstairs and open their presents and all that, well, I wanted to catch Santa Claus, you know, so I went down early, and I caught my father putting together a bike, and I went, oh, no, dad is Santa Claus, Oh, so that just that experience to me negated everything, 
you know, because then it was like, okay, I'm gonna really have to sit and think about this. So from that point on, it's until I have, I mean, until, for instance, God reveals himself to me, it's all gobbledygook. It, I do have an open mind and, it, and, it, and it's like, if he does reveal himself, but it'll have to be revealed, not just to me, but everybody else is gonna have to see it, you know, at the same time. And you do wanna be, be careful. It. You wanna be careful with that standard because that's how prophets are made. It's like, I looked in the cereal bowl <laughs> and I saw Jesus and now I know for a fact that's exactly. happening. Dread, exactly. Dread, you had some comments on this. What's up? Yeah, I was, I was gonna say that, uh, you know, when, uh, when parents uh, consider the things that uh, may harm their children, uh, throughout their uh, their youth, and of course, governments uh, you know don't allow people to vote until they're nine, you know, or in the states until they're 21, and they can't drink and smoke and, and all these restrictions on the uh, activities of youth. And yet, for some reason, uh, the pass is given on the how you treat your eternal soul, presuming you have one, and that um, you are uh, essentially indoctrinated or were made to make a choice uh, about your uh, belief in eternal life and whatnot uh, when you're out of the gate, pretty much. Uh, that's that's where I think the, the child abuse is actually happening um, hmm. in that sense that uh, um, parents are essentially, religious parents are essentially talking out of the size of their mouth with respect to uh, what uh, the care that they uh, wish to impart to the children. Get it. George, you had a comment? George? Uh, George? There you go. Yeah. Um, well, this is a really interesting discussion for me to listen to. Um, being, being raised an atheist, or being, let me put it this way, being raised simply without God in the house. Um, th th this is quite an interesting litany that I'm hearing from from all you people who are former Christians and and so here I am an outsider in a nation that is majority Christian you know and and I'm just uh, t taking it in and, and realizing how much you guys have had to struggle with you know uh, uh, growing up I mean I, I had a difficult childhood it just wasn't difficult in this way so I, I'm having a hard time imagining myself in your shoes, each one of your separate pairs of shoes, because each one of you got a different slant. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what's up, George. The, the, the trick about empathy is you don't necessarily have to understand the problem, but at least be able to recognize that there is a problem. And we, when we respect that more than, you know, taking the time to understand every story, but realizing that there is an issue here. And yeah, I can, I can basically purport most of what's being said regarding child abuse. John, you got four stories. I hear you lifting your hand. Well, we still got a round table to go through. Go for it. I just wanted to come in on what George just said, because uh -huh. I'm the same as you, George. I, I wasn't raised in a religion. So you and I are looking at these other guys as specimens. <laughs> We're sort of studying them. <laughs> I feel so like I'm going to... Oh, what's that? Who's that National Geographic guy? The, the, the one who was looking at the gophers jumping off the cliff. Anyway, yeah, the specimens. I love it. <laughs> Scott, I want to hear from you. You actually have kids. You're one of the, the few that do hate on this show. What do you think of the, the aspect that raising your kid in a religious environment could be considered child abuse as a father? Yeah, I mean, I, in my opinion, it is kind of child abuse in the sense that you're taking away some some very important skills early on mm. um whether it's intentional or not i don't know right. it's kind of like the same question that i posed to um, a christian on my show one time um if i think that my eight like the the question was well don't you think it's terrible that you're an atheist and you're pushing this non-belief in god what if it's true and you're sitting you're trying to drag people away from jesus well the question can be turned around like if for whatever reason, I happen to have the truth that there is no Christianity is not true, for example. And it is the truth. It turns out that it is the truth. And isn't me trying to uh, promote that idea a good thing? Yeah. Don't Isn't it a good thing to kind of help people? So, and she would say, yeah, if it was true, sure. Well, the thing is, with religious people, they think that their religion is true. 
Right. So they think that they're doing the right thing by right. guiding their children the way they want. But yeah. in my opinion, I don't think that they're they're teaching the truth. I think that they're actually doing a disservice in a way because they're not fostering critical thinking and skepticism, healthy skepticism and critical thinking, which is a skill set in life. So for me, in my opinion, I think it is a form of child abuse. Mm. Um, and depending on how far we want to dig into it, it may be a bigger problem than it may seem at, uh, on the surface level. So right, there right. should be that's an objective response. standard to that. There, yeah. It's the most insidious trick about religion in that it fosters generations of people who don't have good critical thinking skills, who then pass mm. those inferior skills down. <clears throat> John, what's up? I see your I see your prompt. You're on mute, my buddy. You're on mute. My you're on mute. Okay, he's just having fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, I just want this came through the watch door tower. yesterday. Oh, that came through the door. A watchtower. Yeah. yeah. Uh, watch our popular manuscript. I know that one. They have apps, though. They have apps, though. So watch out for the uh, app store. I, I just wanted to know, Eric, should I raise my kids in this regime? You might. <laughs> though, Scott, I actually got a question for you. Let's, let's poke this position a little bit. You know, okay. parents give their kids ice cream, knowing that their kid deserved the treat and that there's nutrients, there's milk. You know, there's some, I'm sure there's some vitamins that are useful in ice cream. What if we find oh, out sweet. five years from now, there's some terrible triacylglycerides, there's terrible hormones, there's non-GMO products in ice cream. It's the worst thing you can give a kid. What are we going to call that child abuse too? Like if you're calling your religious upbringing child abuse, what, isn't everything child abuse? If we can find out later on that it wasn't wrong, like, where are you going to draw the line? Well, the line. That's a great question. I am a nutritionist, and I do think it's abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Let's Scott answer. Let's Scott answer. Scott, I want to know about you. What do you think? What do you think? I can tell who's the big brother yeah, already. I mean, it's it, it, it's so weird because we have to define abuse. What is abuse? Is, is hmm. abuse a thing that's intentional? Um, is it abuse when I trying to help someone and it and inadvertently hurt the person? Um, because of something that I was ignorant of. Is that abuse? Is that how we're defining abuse? If so, then yeah, that would be abuse. But I don't know if that's if that's the common definition of the word. So okay. um, it's, it's, it's just a weird question. I think that once you know something is true, or even if you have a little bit of evidence to maybe raise the question, um, I think that the wise thing to do is to uh, lean on uh, you know, err on the side of caution, especially for your kids, mm. you know, and if you're not doing that, that may be a form of abuse, I would say. Scott, think. I'll get two points out and then we go to Dread for a comment and then we'll mm -hmm. follow up with Eric to finish out this round table. But one, I would say it is abuse, even if you don't know, that's just called unintentional abuse, right? And maybe it's yeah. not as bad as intentional abuse, but it could definitely cause as much or even more harm. And then the second thing is instead of mm -hmm. teaching kids the truth based on nuggets of information that we have, given the mechanics to determine what true, what true things are and what false things are. Because th at least then they have the ability and wherewithal and practice skepticism to figure that out for themselves. And what we should really be focusing on is teaching systems of learning rather than learn facts, because those can be valuable or update themselves to not be as do. true in the future. Dred, what's up? My opinion, so, and I don't have kids. You know, <laughs> opinion, I, 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 I think the difference, I think the difference uh, lies in, um, you know, the parents' responsibility, essentially, to teach their children how to think and not what to think. There you and go. And that is the vital difference, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the trick. And if you teach your kid how to think in like the best, there's the great thing about that is we have great ways of how to learn things. And, and in fact, we know what the best one is already by demonstrable by the fact of its accomplishments. And if you were to teach that method, which is the scientific method, mm -hmm. it's an amazing thing to, to have kids learn. And unfortunately, it does take some time to get good at. But the sooner you start, the better you'll you'll be even before you can even get to like a grade school situation. I remember yeah. talking to kids when I was in grade school. We were like, I'm not religious. I don't believe that. Can't you? Don't you understand X, Y, Z? And I'm like, in my Christian head, I was like, Oh, I'm just got to stop talking to this kid because they're making me feel uncomfortable. Like I've had conversations with kids who knew it, who knew what was up even when I was in, you know, first grade. So like, it doesn't take a lot of effort to, to instill good thinking protocols in kids, but mm -hmm. uh, it's all about like 
teaching good epistemologies and then learn, make them realize that they can question that method and try to supplant it or even improve it on their own. It's totally sure. open for everyone to constantly improve. Yeah. Boudreaux, I'm going to throw something out at you, Eric. You got <laughs> beautiful kids. Listen, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, you know, when you're teaching Vivian how to play the violin or guitar, maybe you got a bunch of guitars. Maybe she gets some calluses, you know? Maybe she gets some finger strain. Maybe she'd rather watch cartoons, right? And you say, no, 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 you got to practice. And she's like, oh, I don't want to practice. She's like, this is good for you. You know, sometimes when you are in a system of doing something, it's going to, you know, going to have some edges to it. Can't you just see the greater good of learning an instrument in the same way? Can't you see the greater good of religion? And like, don't its goods outweigh all these, you know, much smaller issues that we're pointing up? Like the greater good of religion is like, hey, you're growing up in a religious society, you get maybe not your morals, as Larry would mention, but you do understand certain things that you should do and shouldn't do, right? <clears throat> you, you understand justice, you understand authority. Sometimes you need to listen to things. Maybe it is good to be disciplined and obedient in a sense. You know who to listen to, who your authority figures are. You have culture, you have society. You, I mean, are these all great things? I mean, you can just hear the devil's advocate sarcasm in your voice. <laughs> Everything you just said, you don't agree with. Um, but no, I mean, it, it's it, that's 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 not fair. I think because uh, uh, when you when you really think about it, not just the lack of morality in the book, but but also the fact that I mean, what religion? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. and what and how deep are you going? And what pages are you are you reading? Um, which parts are you ignoring? I mean, there, there's so much in it that. I, I, it, it hasn't grown with us as a society. I mean, you know, the way we, you know, we talk about homosexuality in the, in the Bible. I mean, so it's, it's, <clears throat> I don't think it's, it's fair. I mean, if, if you let me get in there with a red pen and, and clean it up, which I think some famous comedian or someone did, they, they actually went through the Bible and scratched out all the bad bits and there wasn't much left, but, um, and even then it, it's not, it's not growing. It's not, it's not changing with, with, with the time. And, and I, I love the point too, about age, uh, you know, we don't uh, let children vote at a young age for, for mm. good reason. We don't let them decide whether or not to put on a seatbelt or, or ride in a booster seat. So, I mean, maybe, maybe just hold off on religion until you're 18, then you give it a crack, but, but oh, not just the one of your parents. But now that is interesting. So like, you're not only saying it is abuse, unintentional in, in a lot of cases, but that really, if there was ever going to be a law or like any sort of like protocol, it should be let them learn religion at 18. Yep. And, and at that point, you know, if, if they right. hook on it, good for them, good for them. They're no, no baptisms, no circumcisions, none of that stuff until you're old enough to make the choice for yourself. Hey, you know, there might be some validity to this. I might like it a lot. Larry, uh, some final thoughts before... We get close to the half hour. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, in the formative years, we could teach them things that we have evidence that actually work, like the scientific mm -hmm. method, the rules of logic, uh, rational thought, all those things. And then what? by the time they get to 18, you can go ahead and teach them about what you think about religion. I think that re religion would disappear within a generation if that happened. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. you're that or a lot more Star Trek fans, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> it reminds me of that cartoon about Star Trek, and the little boy says to his father, "says How come there's no uh, people don't go to church in Star Trek?" And the father says, "Because it's the future, son." <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, at, we're at the bottom of the hour and i think we need to take a break real quick uh, this is the digital free thought radio hour and we're on wozo radio 103.9 lpfm right here in knoxville tennessee we'll be right back after this short break five four three two Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Dowder Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's just take a second to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year now. ASK has over 1,000 members, and we have weekly in-person meetings at the Knoxville Old City, uh, Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria down there. Look for us inside at the high top table, usually the loudest and happiest group. 
We also have a virtual Zoom meeting that happens at the same time for people who don't live in Knoxville or happen to not want to get out during this COVID incidence. If you'd like to join our Zoom meeting, uh, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You'll also find um, the Atheist Group, ASK, online at Facebook, meetup.com, or knoxvilleatheist.org. Just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? So we're talking about uh, is religion considered child abuse? We, I think, unanimously agree that it is, though that raises some interesting topics. But before we get into it, John Richards, I know you love truthful propaganda and you love it so much that you're almost a magnet for it. And he was holding up a Watchtower newsletter uh, in the first half of the show. Would you mind telling us some interesting things that you found out about it? Well, I, I read it very carefully from cover to cover. And wow. it offers afterlife it offers eternal life in heaven now this yeah, is you gotta move it's change of address <laughs> yes, it is. sounds like a nice place to be the, the reason this is interesting to me is i'm president of atheism uk and on our council we have a lawyer now in 2012 the advertising standards authority in this country took action the best way of describing it against the healing on the streets movement who at the time were giving out leaflets purporting to be able to solve any condition to cure any illness just if people came along and prayed with them and the advertising standards authority said you can't do that because it's raising false hope so this document is also raising false hope expectation of eternal life i'm going to get our lawyer to put the ASA on their backs. Nice. Dread, comments on this idea? Yeah, well, you know, um, I don't know if you guys remember uh, the Red Bull uh, lawsuit where <clears throat> their advertisement says Red Bull gives you wings. Yes. And they were successfully sued in a class action suit. Uh, because for they literally wouldn't give you wings? That's that's what the uh, that's what the advertising says, and and so anyway, there was a class Is action there no suit. There's no metaphor anymore. I can't. Which it, which mm, one? Which one? Success, they were successful, and uh, and the the uh, the people in the class action suit ended up, you know, getting some kind of small award. Yeah, you know uh, what probably, they do now? They probably just uh, probably free Red Bull for a year or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> now they just put two eyes and wings, and now I know why they have that. That's right, Marshall. exactly. It's the silliest yeah. thing to sue for, man. I can't believe it, uh, Eric. But, but I'm, you... I'm what I'm saying is that if if that's successful, you know, maybe now, maybe John's uh, got a better shot. Dread, I well, actually maybe... have the, I have a comment for you, Dread, because sure. I have. I have in my possession a postcard that details the greatness of the flying spaghetti monster ah, that yes. was given to me by you. And if you are on board with this idea of, I'm not saying litigation, but at least the spirit of it, ah. wouldn't Pasifarianism be just as guilty of touting a, a supernatural being that can just do as many superficial claims? Uh, no. How? In what way? How in what way? That's it. Because I have a double standard. <laughs> <laughs> well played. That's true. <laughs> and, and really, <laughs> I love it. That's a quote for the day, man. Well, you are and, and, and really, who doesn't love pasta? <laughs> because I oh, have <laughs> pasta really exists too. I'm wondering whether the the JWs will pull a Red Bull, you know, and and you know, try and bribe me. Mm. like red bull did <clears throat> uh, by offering me eternal life right. that's <laughs> interesting you know, all right so i'm, I'm gonna pain. throw this out eric you know if you are on board with this or, or how what's your opinion on this do you feel like churches are should be able to do that and be able to you know issue propaganda in support of their beliefs well, first of all they should just put another e in eternal and problem solved <laughs> it's e gonna eternal. happen, mm -hmm. it's gonna it's happen. Uh, yeah well it's uh, it's, it's tough because I think in thinking about the fine spaghetti monster, 
Um, I, I would think most Bostafarians would would happily take a lawsuit, uh, and, and and I'm sure you can respond to this. Happily take a lawsuit if uh, if you know it was fair on on all religions. I mean, if 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 mm-hmm. if you, you could sue uh, Bostafarians for what they're saying in 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 your your uh, uh, your Bible. Uh, then, then I would think that just opens the door to do the same thing to all religions, and I, I would, I would die on that. That sort of interesting. Yeah, that'd be a thoughts. great hill to die on. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say uh, that Pastafarianism alone, amongst religions, is the only one that offers a God back guarantee, and it says, uh, <laughs> "Join us, join us for ninety days if you don't hey, like." Hey, not on this show. Not on this show. You better watch out. He's doing the thing that we, we can get sued for. I'm not going to get sued for this. <laughs> no, we call no way endorse. <laughs> the the claims of a flying spaghetti monster scott what's up yeah i was just gonna say that it would be excellent if you had to require the watchtower society to have fine print mm. that you know mm. that these promises a disclaimer are, now yeah, disclaimer but that would really go against the um the value that people would find in the claims of the church of so sure it would really be an interesting uh, turnabout of events if that were to happen. Sean, I got a question for you. Don't churches also have a right to free speech? And can I issue out publications if I'm a church in the good spirit of free speech and being able to do so? Whether you believe it or not is up to you, but I should be able to communicate freely. Yeah, I believe so. Longer answer? No, short answer? Okay, it totally <laughs> works for me. Hey, Larry, what do you think? Churches, should they have free speech? Like, is this... Aren't you saying by I you can sue me if I say my God is awesome? Isn't that like some sort of well? Churches on my toes do have free church? speech, obviously. I mean, um, they may be trying to draw a line under it in Britain, but uh, in in America, for sure, they're you know it, it say whatever they want to. Uh, I think that generally, worldwide, globally, we need to come up with some kind of standard for true speech. Uh, we have not done that. We need it we very have. badly because especially after this last presidency, if the yeah. president of the United States can say falsehood after falsehood after falsehood for four years straight, right? Uh, what kind of example is that for the rest of us? To the detriment of hundreds of thousands of lives, right? Right, exactly. So the uh, you guys may or may not be aware of the fact that the Center for Skeptical Inquiry is engaged currently in a in a lawsuit with Walmart and CVS over false advertising claims made by their homeopathic products. Oh, um, so sorry. It is it is uh, so these claims are being put to the test, and so I don't see why religion would be exempt from the same level of scrutiny. Let's um, let's stick a homeopathy fork in is. I absolutely want to talk about that in its own topic next week because we're going to delve into the religion of nutrition and i absolutely want you to bring that up again and okay. i think that's a fascinating point of homeopathy i've got one more t-shirt comment yeah, go for, go for it go faith for it. is the homeopathy of reason <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah george brown i'm going to throw a question out at you i'm trying to see how i can phrase it but you know, you were raised an atheist. You never had this religious upbringing or background. Would you be upset if, you know, you were driving down the street in New York, Brooklyn one day, and you just saw large billboards promoting God and or a certain kind of God? Would that in any way change your day? Or would you be like, oh, maybe I might check that out. I'm seeing that advertisement enough times. Well, my, my gut sense... My, my my gut sense is that I would be offended. Really? Yeah, but in the same way that I'm offended here when I see doctors advertising on billboards, I'm not used to that. Sure. I mean, here I am in the Bible Belt. Doctors are advertising on billboards. Lawyers are advertising. Hospitals are advertising. You know, this is... Um, I, I haven't lived in the Bible Belt before. And th- this is a, a different consciousness. So um, what I was going to say when I raised my hand was about freedom of speech is that I'm all for it, but there also have to be consequences for lying. Ooh, okay. You know? How, all right. And this, is a, this is a dangerous territory that we're in right now, but how do you prove oh, okay. 
that a supernatural being isn't capable of the claims of one of his artists, right? Like, what kind of test can you apply to even confirm that's a lie? And should the should well, our guideline me, be we got to prove you're not lying, or should the guideline be you? Well, wait, be wait, 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 wait. I, I need to take it off that particular pedestal okay. um, because I, I've said there have to be consequences for lying in the sense that the, the way the American legal system is set up is you don't have standing to sue somebody unless you have been harmed. Mm -hmm. And I like that, you know. So in other words, if somebody told a lie. Oh, did we lose your audio? We may have. Dred, would, like... you mind, would you mind going on with the spirit? I saw you were raising your hand to be able to speak to something. Uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> okay, so here's my thing. I understand what George Brown is saying. It's basically that we should hold people accountable oh. for what they're saying, including yeah. even large organizations, which I'm for. But should our yeah. standard be we should step in only after we can prove that they're lying? Or should our standard be you got to meet the, the criteria of telling the truth first? before you even start to espouse your, your claims. Yeah. And I'm wondering well, one puts the burden of evidence on me, the other one puts the burden of evidence on them. What's up, right. Jerry? And, and I would think that someone making a positive claim has the burden of truth or burden of uh, proof, right? Yes, and it's not my job to prove that they're lying or not. It's for them to claim, to prove that it's true. Right. In my Just head, like that's in like the, that is the fundamental problem with a lot of religions is that they will say mm -hmm. things and then leave it up to the non-believers to make them make the case that they're in fact wrong and then meanwhile mm -hmm. they profit mm -hmm. and that classic shifting of the burden of proof is what's made them so integral in society today and hard to remove by people who don't have good reasoning what's up john well we already have that standard for products and services you mm -hmm. can't you can't put any lies on your labels you can't make any false claims if you're offering a service you will be prosecuted right 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 okay okay joe larry what's up well, what's funny is, you know, they always say uh, they try to transfer the burden of proof to us saying, uh, how do you know that God doesn't exist? You have all a hunt, you know, the infinite knowledge of the universe you see behind every rock and every cloud and every nebula uh, to know that there's no God out there. But then they turn around and say that the God of that religion isn't real. Right. Or the God right. of that religion isn't right. real. That's you know, why they're doing the exactly same the same thing. Why we've had such a hard time. Right. Right. And, but, but they they won't shoulder any burden, burden or proof either way. But your problem, particularly with the Pasiferian perspective, is that the system is rigged to favor very specific religions. And so even when they're all making equal claims, Christians saying, oh, well, Pasiferian isn't real. And Pasiferians are like, well, our God's the real God. Society or the institutionalized network of how our, mm -hmm. our, our departments, the government and, and authority figures and education all work support one claim and of course. i just find that to be you know hypocritical to the point where it makes me like unnecessarily upset and that causes harm in my own aspect scott mm -hmm. i saw you raising your hand what's up yeah I, I would say like for me i would think that science would should be a good standard for uh evidence and truth but see this is the problem that we're going to run into with religious folk is they're going to say that well you're appealing to scientism which is a philosophical statement you're going to say that science is the authority for supernatural stuff like they can make the claim that well religion can't be proven scientifically it's not a scientific question so right. how can you use science as a standard to judge my religion and then so you've got to come up with another way to um you know claim that these are false claims or whatever the case is you know so uh, who are the scientists here? We got John, Eric, me. I'm going to say, and and you're an entomologist, aren't you, Dredd? Or yeah. you, you know some stuff about it? Like, I'm sure we all have some aspects of this. I'll, I'm I think pretty you, invested in science, yes. I think you won't have issues if I say this. But yes, currently science doesn't have a way to test the supernatural. But once we do, once something can be proposed as a model to test for supernatural things, that becomes science. Like mm -hmm. that will be con entirely included as a new test within the realm of science to right. test the supernatural. <clears throat> so it's not <throat> that it's never going to be a scientific method. What we're asking for is please show us the methods so we can verify if it's actually feasible or not. And what we get is word games and not like a God detector machine. Right. Give us a God detector mm -hmm. machine. Let us test it. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. Too many fans. John, what's up? And all the while, 
the claims of supernatural are untestable. Yes. They are unscientific claims. They're unfalsifiable. It's, it's mm -hmm. also one of the problems. Well, too, not repeatable. Give us a situation where regardless, it's always going to point to you know, that. Uh, what is up, Dredd? Well, I was just going to say, uh, some uh, people may recall Stephen Jay Gould uh, talking about uh, religion and science as being non-overlapping magisteria, when in fact claims of any kind of supernatural uh, being or things um, are supposed to have real-world effects. And that's where those claims um, <clears throat> do have a burden of proof on those making them, because mm. the real-world effects <clears throat> are what are the testable aspects of it, right? Right. Boudreau, Eric, I'm going to throw this out at you. Same question, uh, scientists in the room. Is it, I mean, do you think that there could be potential if a model is presented that says this actually will test if there's a God or not, it's a scientific method, can give binary yes or no's. Would that be, would that be adopted by science? Would science, from your perspective, be open to that as a machine or a, a testing algorithm? Yeah, yeah, no, I think if we could come up with a way to to test our claims, if, if that's what you mean. Yeah, Even yeah, and I, ones. yeah, and I, and I think one one maybe maybe science fictiony sounding uh, machine uh, could be a time machine. Ooh. I mean, what if we went, went back 2,000 years and see? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I've had, this, I've had this discussion with Eric before because we're talking about a time machine that lets you peer into the past and see it without actually interacting with anything. It just pulls all the photons back together mathematically and then reconstructs any image you want. And you can see if Jesus died on the cross. So you can see if he made food multiply. You have, oh, you can see if Muhammad did what Muhammad did. You could see if right. Jade did what Jade did. Zeus did what Zeus claimed to have done. It make yeah. it, it solve things like right yeah. like I I totally get you if we had that that'd be fantastic John what do you have well the very idea that something supernatural can have an effect in the natural realm is mm. nonsense it's it's a complete inconsistency because oh, the supernatural is immaterial and an immaterial entity cannot have any effect on the material <laughs> imagine a ghostly hand trying to push a dime a what the domino, it's going to go straight through, isn't it, and have no effect. Uh, George, did you have something to say? Well, I unfortunately, let me give you a, a little backtrack here. Um, I lost my sound. I know, I know. Did well, you have a when I stopped when I stopped speaking, and I've discovered that every single Zoom meeting has its own technology, and one that I suffer from on this meeting almost every week is that my incoming sound just vanishes and I have to reboot my whole system to get back in. So I have missed everything in between. Don't worry, we'll sorry. catch you up. We'll catch you up. It's God. So what I think you've been talking about, what, what I think you've been talking about makes sense to me. And I don't quite know how to implement it, but I like it. At, George is actually on a good point. So we've been talking a lot of smack right now, you know, child abuse got or religion is child abuse that you know we don't have a scientific measure of God, so why believe it in the first place? How do you rectify it? What do we do to litigate it? Are you gonna punish the parents that are involved in this? I'll throw this out to Eric first. I'd like to see, should there be some sort of punishment criteria based on intentional to completely intentional misinformation of children on a religious ground? Or is that something that should always be up to the parent to be able to determine on their own? Uh, we we have, you know, we have a lot of uh, you know laws keeping parents from doing horrible things to kids. Um, but it does seem that religion kind of gives a, a, a get out of jail free card for some things. And maybe next week we can get into some of the, you know, religious exemptions to medicine and and things like that. But sure, yeah, um, it, it it's scary. I, I don't I don't think the world's ready for for that yet. Um, uh, you, again, because it seems like it would it would look like we're um, trying to, you know, attack religion. But I, I don't know. I, I feel I feel like the the having a, a like a grace period before you start indoctrinating would be something that it just would be. So you're saying a that if I'm a, if I'm an adult and I bring my child to church, there should be some sort of action by a government, or is that a fine, or is it a 
uh, just a public shunning? Like, what's the situation? Maybe, what, maybe the it starts. Maybe it starts more as a. <laughs> it starts more as a, a, a recommendation. A taboo. Oh, oh, what that, Larry? A recommendation. Yeah, kind of like, kind of make it make it seem icky. Like you know, like taking your kid to a strip club. That would be weird, right? So, so we got some comments. Taking, it's, <laughs> <laughs> All right, leave on that. That's a great comment. We're gonna leave on the great comment, Dred. What's next? Yeah. Uh, you and then John and then well, Scott. It, it it's interesting that there's so much actually uh, so much cognitive dissonance among people of various religions with respect to the practices of other religions that aren't theirs. For instance, there's all kinds of Christians who would throw their arms up in the air if they heard on the news that a child was denied a blood transfusion because yep. the parents of that particular faith mm -hmm. denied that life-saving uh, uh, intervention. Um, so, you know, it, it depends on where you're standing uh, from your religious pulpit as to whether or not you agree or disagree, but you never turn that uh, gaze inward to examine the failure of your own epistemology. Sure. Yep. I hear that. John. Well, there's a template for this, isn't there? Because the movies have a rating system, don't they? So <laughs> I, I suggest we just make churches X rated. Nice. <laughs> or okay. no, no, I like this idea. I kind of like this yes. idea. If we made <laughs> churches PG 13 or the Bible PG 13, you know, or all religious texts PG 13 as a yes. recommendation, that is parental guidance, right? Yes. That means you can't yes. sell a Bible to some kid. I don't know how many kids are in line to get Bibles in the first place, though, but at least the recommendation is there. And if you're an adult and you, know, you want to buy your kid a thing, go for it. But if you just walk down the street and you see a nine year old going through the book of John, you're like, hey, <laughs> where's your parents? That would be a Spider Man comic book, kid. Need everybody to get on board about making memes that religion should be PG 13. We'll spread it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Scott, uh, you had the comment next. What's up? And then George. Yeah. I, I was just going to say what uh, Dread Pirate just said about the blood transfusion. I'm familiar with that and the organ transplant with Jehovah's Witnesses and all of this kind of stuff. It's like right now, um, the U S the, the United in the United States, that's a protected right for the parent to deny medical treatment for their children. Mm. Um, that's obviously abuse in my opinion. Mm. Um, but it's protected. That kind of abuse is a protected in this country. Mm -hmm. So it seems like we're already, we've already set a precedence and it's going to be a really hard uphill battle to overturn, um, that including, any other sort of in these are we're talking about claims words stuff like that yeah these are actually things that endanger the life the very life of a child and they're exactly. already protecting that so well consider the challenge to roe versus wade i mm -hmm. mean with a, a conservative uh um bench uh, you guys are probably in a lot of trouble yeah george you got a comment hey classic mic technique you've been in radio you know this there you go. Take yourself on mute, my bud. Unmute. Up, oh, still on mute. Okay. So I'm translating for him. You have to <laughs> buy more coffee. It's really good for you. It's really good for you. Forget about it. All right. Hold so, down spacebar, George. Just hit while, spacebar. While, while George is working on his uh, uh, audio issues, how about this? We're near the end of the show. We'll do last words on the subject. I like the PG-13 idea. That's like some of my final ideas. And I do think there should be some consideration before you involve your child in a religious environment because you, I know you want the best for your kid, but is that something that your parents just did for you and that's the reason why you're doing it? It tends to be the case that you know we, we give the kids the same childhood we have, but is, your, is that the best system to improve things? It, it, it's Being an adult's hard. What can I tell you? Dred, final words on this? Um, well, I, I just, I did want to mention my disappointment in some of my fellow Canadians, uh, in this convoy effort to, uh, um, you know, for anti-vaxxers and anti-maskers and anti-mandators, um, it's disappointed to see so many people exercise the freedom mm. to have a convoy across Canada to speak their mind while claiming they don't have freedom. It's, it's bizarre and disappointing. 
Certainly John, is. final words? Yeah, well, I, I, I'd like to ask all you guys who were raised in a religion, that's not you, George, but everybody else, would you, if you have children, or if you plan to have children, would you raise them the way you were raised? Mm. <laughs> or what improvements can you make, right? I know that's a, that's a huge shot to an ego, but like what improvements could you make to your childhood that you can you know, pass forward? And that takes some honest thought and reflection, I think. And religion may not always be the best answer for that. Larry, oh, before we get to your final words, uh, Sean, thank you for joining the yes. show today. Final words on our topic? Yeah, I found it very interesting. And, and going back to the question, would I raise my children? I do have two grown children. And what I did is I tried to explain the best I could that this is because their grandparents on my wife's side at the time were very religious. And I said, and I know that they... I have no idea. I left them with them. So I know that this is being talked about. And I just tried to explain to them when they were old enough to kind of understand that, okay, I don't believe this stuff. And this is why, mm. okay, they're going to tell you that it's true, but I want you to try to keep an open mind, you know, and, you know, figure it out for yourself, right. you know, but, <clears throat> and that's the best I could do. Yeah. You know? and, is, and is it so much about you don't have to worry about trading your facts to your kids, but can you teach them to figure things out? Can you teach them a method exactly. of understanding two things are false things? Because that's way more useful because the world's always yeah. going to be changing. The answers that we have exactly. today can always be improved on, but only if we have good wherewithal to figure out how to get those answers. Yeah. Um, and, you know, also when you raise children, you're also raising them within the, you know, how you were raised, you know, and every generation is different. You know, like I can't keep up. Scott, with I can tell this to your brother. <laughs> <laughs> you know? we, so thank you so much for being on the show sean we, we got to wrap up it's a half hour broadcast george i owe you an apology i had you on mute i didn't know how to turn off the settings so uh george do you have final words on the topic of the show well i i think you can hear me now yes, um, sir. i i think we've raised a, a new topic and i'm really sorry i couldn't hear i'm, I'm going to go i'm going to go to um youtube and hear what you all said after i lost my sound because i know i set off something because you're all talking animatedly i could not hear you <laughs> I, I don't know what that i'm sorry i was going to say a curse word um <laughs> i don't know what you all said and, okay it's um, okay but um, i but anyway i i would just want to comment that um you know i'm an atheist and i'm living in the same rowboat as all these other people who are you know voting the, the way they're voting, they're, 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 their delusions are affecting my life. And so uh, it's like you all have been talking about implementing changes. And what I want to know is how are we going to do that? And, and maybe this is a topic for a whole other show. Yeah. Cool. Larry, I see you raising your hand. What's up? I'm, I'm, I, well, I'll save it for the end of the show if everybody's got their last words out. Cool. Uh, What's uh, how much time do we have you for the end of the show, Larry? Right. Pretty close. We're pushing yeah, it. I know, I know. Guys, we may have to wrap up about here. Eric, did you get a chance to say your final words? Uh, I, I didn't, but I'm, I'm glad Sean did because he's a newcomer and 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 I'm good. Cool, great cool. show, everyone. Yeah, great show, everyone. Yep. Sorry, mm -hmm. I, we were animated cast, big big cast today. So happy everybody showed up today. Larry, I don't know what atheism is. <laughs> <laughs> That's sure you do. <laughs> anyway uh thanks for plugging my book it's available on digital i'm sorry on uh amazon it's called atheism what's it all about and what i had to say on the topic was uh how do you raise your kids if we're atheists do we teach them what we know mm -hmm. what i would do is just teach them that it's okay and necessary to question what you've been told i want them to question what i tell them as well as what they anybody else tells them yep. you know and let it go at that and, and trust to their intelligence and education to carry them the rest of the way. If you like this show, be sure to go to the digitalfreethought.com and click on the blog button. We have our radio show archives there, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. If you have questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com and we'll answer them on future shows. If you're having trouble emotionally, rationally, whatever, leaving religious beliefs behind, you can find help at recoveringfromreligion.org. Thank you for joining us on the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. 
Remember, you can find this show on Apple iTunes, Rocket Cast, Amazon, and podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, bye everybody. Bye, bye everyone. Okay, great show, everyone. <laughs>